Okay, today is an exciting day because we're going to start creating an, our own program. So you right now, you must have installed DevShed C++. Uh, you're ready to rock and roll now because I'm going to teach you how to use a project. And then after the project, I'm going to teach you how to do a simple source code exercise. And then we can build on that uh, as you take your um, your C++ course course. Uh, as we go on to the next few sections. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have Dev Shed C++ installed. And there is a lecture that I put on before this in section two that tells you how to install it. Uh, if you haven't done so, please do so already. If you have already installed Dev Shed C++, then you are on the right track. Now, if you've done Visual Studio, okay, which I'm not covering in this course, that's okay too. It's a little bit different. Concepts are the same, but code does not change. Okay, first thing I want you to do is I want you to go to start. And then you're going to look for dev C++. Uh, if it's not on your shortcuts here, you may want to go to all programs uh, over here. And then you should see something called bloodshed dev C++ in your drop down menu again bloodshed dev c++ if you click on that also I can just start that up right there okay once you have that open then you can go into file new and we're gonna create sorry about that create a new project and c++ at its core Really, you only need a CPP file, but when you're using an IDE, the IDEs create something called a project file. Just like in Visual Studio, you may come across a solution file. Solution or a project file basically merges your source code files together so that it, you have a project-based uh, application uh, source. So this way, if you have more than one CPP file, it's all grouped into this one project file which references all these CPP files. As you get more advanced, you're going to have the ability to create other files which are co also code and you may want to separate your code. Not in this particular course, but if you take a data structures course, you're going to have multiple files in one project. So the ability of the project to actually merge these all files and group them into one project is definitely an advantage. That's why you have a project file, and then you're going to have from the project file, the hierarchy goes project file, and then CPP files that belong to this project file. So when you click on File New Project, and for this particular course, we're going to be building console applications. What does that mean? It means that we're going to go back to the DOS days where you just have a black box, and we execute all programs outputs to the console uh, DOS window. Uh, and again, I find this the easiest way to teach this. Keep it simple. And that's been my motto f pretty much all my life. Let's keep it simple because every every time you try and complicate something, you just get lost in the weeds. So uh, make sure that you click on console application. You have C++ project and then the name for your project. So we'll call this my first. Okay, my first. And then click OK. And then you're going to see where it's going to tell you where do you want to save your projects. Okay. Where do you want to save your projects? So you may want to click on a folder underneath your dev CPP where it installed, or you may want to create a new folder called projects. So what I did is under dev CPP, I created a folder called projects. So this is where I'm going to put all my projects for this course. So I click save. And there you go. It generates a program template for you already ready to go. So the first thing you want to do is we haven't written any code yet. Uh, I just want to get you through the kind of like the rundown of what you're seeing on the screen. This is your text editor. This is where you're going to write your source code. So when we write an algorithm, we write an algorithm in Notepad or Word, and then we will translate that into this source code uh, into the C++ language. So all this is is a text file, but uh, the standard for C++ text files has an extension of .cpp. 
and this generates a .cpp file initially for you and it by default it names it main.cpp what I usually like to do is rename this to the actual project name uh, if I'm just using one file or just creating a cpp file or rename the cpp file to what I'm actually doing with this program so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the first thing you want to do is go to prior, uh, execute and then you want to just uh, compile and when you the first time that you compile the program is going to ask you to save the file the cpp file if you see the save as type you're going to see the cpp file type so what you want to do is I what I usually do is change the name because I've or maybe you have another main and you don't want to write it over just like I have here so now we're looking at different types a different type of file which is a C++ source file uh, and any CPP file is going to be a source text file which is just contains your code so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save it as uh, first program and don't do anything there leave it as C++ source file and click save and you're good and now I'm very glad this happened okay you're, some of you may get an error that says you know ID returned exit one status what does that mean it means that you should be running this program as an administrator and administrator administrator so what happened was when I clicked on you know start and you know all programs and then I went to dev blood dev shit C++ uh, and I just clicked on this what I'm, I'm doing is I'm running as a least privileged user which uh, this is not allowing me to run as so your security on your computer some Windows 7 users or even Windows 10 may have this issue and I'm glad that it happened to me because now I can help you solve it so what you're gonna do is you're gonna close this down okay and you're gonna say yes I'm gonna save my changes okay and what you wanna do is you wanna click on the start menu again but this time okay this time you're gonna hold down shift and you're going to go into the hover over dev C++ and you're going to do a right click okay when you do that it gives you the option to run as administrator so what you want to do is you want to run this program as the administrator to give it all permission so that it can access any files that it needs to access uh, on your C drive okay so I'm going to do that I'm going to run as administrator it's going to tell you blah 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 do you really want to do this it might kill your computer trust me you do want to do this if you want to continue the course so click on yes and you'll have the application up running in no time now what I'm gonna do is because I already created the project I just want to open up the project file okay now every time you go into DevShed C++ you want to open the project file you don't want to open the CPP file itself you want to open the project file okay so I'm gonna say file and then open and I'm gonna look for the project that I just created which was stored under projects and then I just did it over right now I'm just gonna say dev project so here it is um, project one or I can do product p4 whichever I want so uh, I'm gonna open this up so remember uh, on the drop down do dot dev okay because this is the project file extension that dev shed uses and then just look for a project file that you've created so I'm gonna open up project one okay click open uh, and then it should have your C++ file if it doesn't have your C++ file uh, you should try another one so I think that one I don't have uh, let me see if I go to dev click on open yes I want to close that that's very strange so what I want to do is I'm just gonna add to the project and I'm gonna add my first CPP file so I'm gonna add this main here that I found as an orphan file I want to make sure that I'm on the right directory I am uh, so I'm gonna add a CPP file to this and there you go okay and this was one of our first programs that I learned in the beginning and I want to do that save that okay so now I want to compile this so I want to compile and it should be fine now I have zero errors, zero warnings and nothing 
So now it compiled successfully. Okay. And I went into execute and then compile and run. And nothing happens. Why? Because you're not really doing anything. Okay. You're not really doing anything. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to write out Hello World. The first thing you want to do is say using namespace std. Okay. So what we're trying to do here is we're going to access the output library. I mean the output um, method so that we can write output to the actual console. Okay. So we want to use the cout library and we can say cout hello world. Oops. Okay. Uh, and then once we do that, this will print out to the console. Now, a couple of things I want you to notice here. See so the IO stream. So this section here is your library declarations. So this tells the compiler to use um, a library called IO stream, which enables you to write to output and read from input and a couple of other things available to you from the C++ function library. The next thing is something called using namespace, uh, namespace std. I'm going to talk about that in the coming lectures, but just when you write this program, you have to include this in here. Uh, basically, in C++, if you include a library, you also have to use a namespace for that library so that you can use its functions uh, out of that uh, std library. So basically, if I could do this, or I can do std colon colon and do that and then if I compile that I still get the same result okay um, sorry here oh end line it also so std end line and then let's see if we compile so there you go right so end line itself is a keyword also that is part of the IO stream library and I have to use if I didn't because I comment this commented this out um, the std I have to append it with std colon colon same thing here std colon colon and then c out so c out is your command to write to output now using a namespace uh, is a little bit of a bad practice uh, it all depends on who you who you ask I mean this is an initial learning course so we can use it but uh, as you start writing classes and all that and you're creating your own templates, uh, I think I would be in agreement that it is bad practice to just use a namespace because you could have collisions uh, in your code. But again, that's um, we're not trying to create, we're, we're not advanced programmers yet. So we can include this in here, okay? And I can take this out so I don't have to keep writing std in here and I can save that and then now I can e compile and run okay so first we just compiled so we created our object code but now we want to compile and run and there you go hello world when you see the console line and here's the hello world and we successfully created our first program so again just to summarize okay everything we write from now on is going to be in something called a main function the main function is where all programs start execution. Okay. Uh, and then within this main function, we can write our code in here. And the other thing we need to include is our IO stream library. The IO stream library contains functions for input and output. Uh, and as well as other types of variables like string. Uh, not actually not string, uh, other, other variables which we will go over in the later lectures, which don't come to mind right now, but uh, I don't have him off the top. I know that off the top of my head, as you saw, endline is also part of this IO stream library. Because once I use that, then I use the namespace. So the namespace std has to do with the IO stream library. It's just telling us to say we're going to use a namespace called std. The std namespace belongs to the IO stream library, and the std namespace contains c out and endline. Okay, simple as that. So std belongs to IO stream. Okay, and then the std will say, okay, std contains c out and it contains n line and it also contains c in. Okay, so now as in before, I, I did something real weird that you've probably never seen before, which is comment my code. So when you comment code, meaning you put a forward slash forward slash, the compiler will ignore this uh, line. Okay, 
You can also code your you comment your code using a forward slash asterisk uh, and I'm, for, I'm sorry forward slash star or asterisk uh, forward and backward and that will also uh, comment out a block of code for you. So whatever you prefer. I like doing this when there's a lot of code that I want to comment out. So if you may have something like this, okay. So this works pretty good. If you do it just forward slash forward slash, you have to do it on every line for commenting code. Okay, uh, so that's it for using the compiler. It's just initial kind of training that we have, just creating your own Hello World program. And I'm glad that we ran into a little bit of a hiccup in the beginning. But now uh, we're all good, and uh, hopefully you will run into that error, and then you have it solved right here. Okay, for those of you that don't didn't get that error with the make file, then you're probably just good, and you can just execute compile and compile and run your code. Okay. So I'm going to give you a quiz soon, and um, I'll see you in the algorithm design section.